मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून How are you? Good. Man. We will wait for two minutes. Then we'll start the session. okay so let us uh, start the session okay so is the screen visible to you the slides which i am showing yes sir okay. yes sir okay okay so last time we have seen the inversions of double slider crank chain and how this chain uh, chain is made that there is one slotted plate in which slots have been cut and two sliders are provided in them which are connected with the help of one bar okay so it will be known as double slider crank chain we have seen the two inversions of this chain first one is elliptical trammel of which uh, we have given the mathematical proof also that point any point on link ab or its extension will trace an ellipse except the midpoint uh, which traces a circle then we have seen the scotch of mechanism also that it is used to convert rotary motion into reciprocating motion now let us come to the third one that is your oldham's coupling okay so in oldham's coupling you know uh, you have to fix one link and the link which is remaining to be fixed is your link number 2 that is this bar okay so if you ground it if you fix it and you free the other link okay so now slotted link is free to move only bar link 2 is fixed then you give motion to any one link the remaining link 
and observe the motion of the other links okay so as link 2 is fixed we can give motion either to link 3 which is a slider and uh, link 1 which is also a slider so you will input the motion to any one slider relative motion will be same okay so now see that this particular point b has been pivoted okay the point b on the slider also cannot move but this slider this slider can turn okay it can turn about point b like this means aap usko rotate kar sakte ho okay so when you will rotate the slider one okay what will happen if you will try to rotate this slider like this uh, with slider this slotted frame okay it will also rotate with this because it will exert a force on the wall or on the groove or slot okay that force will uh, force the slotted plate to rotate with slider okay and as this slotted plate will rotate like this this slider will also turn this slider that is uh, slider 3 it will also turn about the point a are you getting how the motion will be transmitted okay so briefly we can say that you have invented something to transmit motion or power from point b to point a okay so as the point b will complete one revolution the slider uh, will complete one revolution the link 3 will also complete one revolution means you can say that you have transmitted the power from a shaft which is present here to a shaft which is present here somewhere here okay so uh, one can say that an alden's coupling can be used to transmit the power between two shafts which are not coaxial okay so coaxial shafts you know say this is one shaft and this is the another shaft so these are the coaxial shaft axis of shaft 1 and of shaft 2 will coincide but in case of the uh, shafts which are offset which have their axis offset by some distance okay you can use the oldham's coupling to connect these two shafts one and two one and two dash which are offset which are uh, whose axis are parallel to each other by small distance r so you can transmit power from shaft one to shaft two using the oldham's coupling okay now how is the exact shape of the oldham's coupling i will explain that to you it is like that okay so in shape and form it may look different okay than the uh, original kinematic chain but only what we have done depending upon our requirement we have changed the shapes of different links here okay so here it is a shaft okay driving shaft in our case it was a slider okay which was pivoted at one point so that slider now cannot slide it is only free to turn about some points okay so th that is given a, a shape of the shaft it is here okay it is the link to which we have fixed frame or casing or housing of the oldham's coupling okay then on this frame are only there is the driven shaft which is nothing but the second slider in our uh, double slider crank chain which is connected here okay and this two 
and these two are connected with the help of this intermediate piece in intermediate piece which is nothing but our link 4 you can say this link 4 is your slotted frame slotted plate okay so now see how this inter uh, mediate piece that is slotted frame has been inverted in shape okay so it is shown here link 4 okay so what is here here it is a circular plate you can see intermediate piece and instead of making a slot in that okay this teeth is provided over it which is called as tongue tongue of the intermediate piece see okay means instead of uh, giving it a cavity uh, we have given it a projection which is coming out of its surface okay so we have inverted the shape of link 4 that is slotted plate similarly we have provided another tongue okay which is on the other side and that tongue is like that it is perpendicular to the tongue on this side like this okay as that tongue is not visible i will show it with the help of dotted line like this okay so what happens as you have provided a projection okay then this projection will go into the slot which is made in the shaft shaft flange so this is the flange which is connected to the shaft there is no relative motion between shaft and flange okay it is rigidly connected to the shaft and in this flange a slot is provided okay which will take the projection of this tongue it will be fitted like this and another flange is provided to the another shaft which will also have a cavity in that which will take the tongue of the other side like this here okay so now what will happen when shaft driving shaft a when it will rotate okay this flange will also rotate with that okay and as in this flange intermediate piece has been inserted okay this intermediate piece will also rotate with this flange okay and also intermediate piece is free to slide in this uh, uh, cavity of the flange so it will rotate and on the other hand it will transmit the power to the another shaft because its uh, tongue on the other side is sitting in the cavity of the flange so its motion it will take from here it will transmit to this shaft and by doing this action it is also uh, free to slide so it will keep sliding up and down up and down okay so at this position it is here after some time uh, it this this particular section will come here okay and uh, this part will become somewhere here so it will keep sliding like this okay so i will show you uh video of the same which will give you a clear idea also request you to type your attendance in the first session only Can you see the video? Yes, sir. Hmm. Okay. Okay. See how this action is happening. It is one shaft with flange, and this intermediate piece is provided with turns. Its projections. So as it is rotating. it is the its uh, projections are also sliding in these slots slots of the flange so power is transmitted from this shaft to this shaft okay so when will you use the oldham coupling when uh, you know uh, there is 
when there is slight distance between the axis of two shaft okay so this axis is a little higher than the axis of this shaft then to connect such shaft you can use the oldham's coupling okay so oldham's coupling basically is a an inversion of double slider crank chain okay so in this way uh this second part which we started okay of the module one is over now we will go to the uh, first part of the first module okay any doubt anything you want to ask no sir okay okay so see it is the same part of module 1 it is the actually the first part of the module 1 which is kinetics of rigid bodies okay so already i think you know what is kinetics in kinetics what we study we study the motion and study of motion means what you study the displacement velocity acceleration okay and in kinetics with all these motion parameters we also consider the forces okay which are causing the motion okay we are not only interested in motion parameters we also study the forces so you will see in formulae which we uh, we which we will be using okay formulae of forces are also there so that is a brief introduction of kinetics okay now let us see what is mass moment of inertia okay and radius of gyration okay so as far as inertia is concerned can anyone say what is inertia inertia of any object any what uh, component okay which is made of mass or any object you can car okay car is also an object yourself is also an object so what is inertia opposition to the change resistance to the change right the resistance to the motion no re not resistance to motion it is resistance to the change okay change that uh, a body always tries to resist any change in its state of rest or its state of uniform motion that tendency of the body is called as inertia okay suppose a body is kept like this on floor okay and uh, if someone applies the force okay let uh, let it say that uh, force may be very small okay so when some some force is applied to move it the body will try to first resist that force with its capacity okay the state of the body is that it is in rest okay 
and it will not like to easily change its state of rest. Similarly, if say some uh, body is moving with uniform velocities, its velocity is not changing, right? Velocity is constant. So it is the tendency of the body that it will try to move with the same velocity and it will oppose any force which is trying to change the velocity of the body. Okay, so that is called as inertia. So some bodies have more inertia, some have the less inertia, you know. So how to measure the inertia of any object? Okay, so generally what happens Inertia is measured in terms of mass, mass of the object. If mass of the object is high, inertia is considered as high. That that body has uh, more mass, so it has more inertia. Okay, now this mass is the measurement or measure of inertia as far as your linear motion is considered, okay, in case of linear motion, in case of linear motion, that is a point, a point mass or an object is moving in a straight line, okay. So in such a case, the mass itself is sufficient to describe the inertia of the body, okay. But when there is angular motion, Okay, say a body is moving about any axis. It is having some angular motion. At that time, at in the case of angular motion, mass alone, mass alone is not sufficient to describe the inertia of the body. Okay, then what also comes into picture is that how mass, this particular mass of the body is distributed from the axis of rotation. Okay, suppose a point is there, a point mass, okay, say it has mass m and say its distance, perpendicular distance, okay, its perpendicular distance is k from the axis of rotation, okay? So now its distance from the axis of rotation that is K as well as the mass of the point will decide the inertia in case of angular motion, okay? Only mass is not sufficient. Similarly, suppose if the mass is at somewhat higher distance, say if mass is here, Okay, so it's a distance K. I'm considering it to be a point mass. Point mass is one uh, which, in, uh, which is where the mass of the body is supposed to be concentrated at a single point. Okay, means you can say that its dimensions are very short. Whole mass is at point, okay. So in this case, second case, your k distance, say k1, is higher than this k. Okay, so definitely as it is at more distance, okay, its inertia in this case will change. Okay, and it is a matter of common sense that when the distance of the rotating body from its axis of rotation is more, that is its radius of rotation is more, then its inertia is greater. Though mass has not changed, but its distance has changed from the axis of rotation, so its inertia has also changed. Okay, so in case of angular motion, okay, in case of angular uh, motion, we denote mass moment of inertia, mass moment of inertia I as a product, as a product of mass, 
into k square and if you see k is the distance so its unit will come out as kg meter square or kg mm square whatever okay so what is i i is called as mass moment of inertia and this concept is useful while doing the motion analysis of the rotating bodies rotating bodies got it okay so i, I will repeat it so you know that inertia every object has inertia okay with the help of which it will resist the any change in its current state whatever state it has it the state may be state of rest or state of uniform motion so it will resist any force which will try to change its state so as far as linear motion is considered mass itself is sufficient to stand for inertia that low mass low inertia high mass high inertia okay but in case of angular motion mass only is not sufficient to describe the inertia of the body okay inertia in case of angular motion also depends on how mass is distributed mass is distributed along the axis of rotation about the axis of rotation okay uh, if mass is at further distance okay definitely its inertia will be higher and if it is uh, distributed mass is distributed near to the axis of rotation its inertia will be less okay and then we defined one term which we call which we are calling as mass moment of inertia i equal to mk square okay so inertia of, of the rotating body is directly proportional to square of the k k is known as radius of gyration okay now uh, i will take you for for further discussion next okay now you consider this body it is a fixed line which is nothing but your axis right axis of rotation about this body is rotating this is the rigid body now you can see that this rigid body has got some dimensions you can see the shape it is not a point mass as we have considered earlier okay its mass is well distributed along its width height etc okay so in such case where mass is not uh, concentrated at one point okay how we calculate the mass moment of inertia we divide the body into number of masses particle masses m1 m2 m3 m4 at like this and we calculate the mass moment of inertia of each particle okay for example what is the mass moment of inertia of particle m1 so it will be m1 into k1 square then inertia of particle m2 m2 into k2 square in this way you find out the mass moment of inertia of all this particle and then complete or total mass moment of inertia of the body can be found by adding all these small uh, inertias so you will find it like this i equal to m1 k1 square like this okay why we are doing this because here mass has is well uh, very well distributed okay like this we cannot assume that uh, mass is concentrated at some point 
okay so in this way you will find out this all this okay so now let us assume let us assume that there is some point on the body correct there is some point on the body where we can assume whole mass whole mass of the body to be concentrated here okay so this m is nothing but your addition of all the particle masses m1 plus m2 okay plus mn up to mn okay and let us say this point mass m is at a distance of k right so whatever is the inertia of this point mass m okay it should be equal it should be equal to what is the total mass moment of inertia of the body okay so say uh, if we consider the point mass m and its distance k from the axis of rotation what will be the mass moment of inertia it will be mk square so this mk square should be equal to m1 k1 square plus m2 k2 square plus m3 k3 square like this okay so we have written this equation this uh, second one okay and then we get this formula i is equal to mk square now here you can define what is k okay k is what k is the known as radius of gyration radius of gyration it is defined as the distance between the axis of rotation distance between the axis of rotation and the point and the point where the whole mass of the rotating object is supposed to be concentrated okay so that we call as radius of gyration okay now this uh, point where we are telling that the mass of whole rotating body is supposed to be concentrated okay it may not be the center of gravity that is the cg of the rigid body okay please note down okay cg we define again in terms of uh, your uh, when we are studying the linear motion okay at that time concept of center of gravity is important okay and same significance your radius of gyration gate in case of the rotating motion or angular motion what significance you have for the cg center of gravity in linear motion same significance you will have for the uh, radius of gyration in case of your angular motion okay are you noting it down so keep noting down this formula i is equal to mk square and if you will again read it like if you will revise it at home okay you will uh, surely know and remember my words okay what i want to say you write down this formula i is equal to mk square Okay, should I move? Any doubt? Please ask. And also type your attendance. See, 
type your attendance in chat box i consider the attendance which is given in the first session before rejoining i can see that participants are 13 so one of them is myself so 12 participants and in chat box only 11 entries are there so who has not uh, or somebody else is attending from the other class sagar singh are you in the same class sagar 15 yes who has yes, not yes sir yes so who has not given attendance participants are 13 means one myself so 12 of you are there in only who did hasn't given yes please give the attendance okay so see it is the uh, thing like that and as far as now you know the formula okay so what happens that when you solve the problem a uh, radius of gyration is given radius of gyration for standard object okay for example say this this there is this disc it is a circular disc right okay suppose this disc is rotating about this axis of rotation right say axis of rotation is x so for this particular condition when axis of rotation is passing through its center of gravity or through its centroid okay at that time k will have some value okay which will be given in terms of its radius what is the radius of the disc okay so k will be equal to r upon 2 or r upon root 2 okay or one formula is there okay so that from that formula you can find suppose if i change the axis of rotation for example now my axis of rotation on let us uh, change here only it is the axis of rotation y now instead of axis x the disc is rotating about axis y like this okay so in this case if you see the radius of gyration will change okay you cannot use the same formula here because what happened in in the, when axis of rotation changed because of this the distribution of mass the distribution of mass about the axis of rotation has been changed see okay so uh, because of this the value of radius of gyration will change and that will also change the mass moment of inertia of the disc okay for example now let us uh, consider another situation suppose now your axis of rotation is here say z axis and this disc is completely rotating like this about this axis z okay like our earth is rotating about the sun okay so in that case as again here the axis of rotation has been changed so your k will also change your k will be changing okay and there are certain rules to determine this when you will go uh, uh, through its theory you will understand that there are standard formulae which have been derived okay by the basic equation of this and with the help of integration formulae we don't need to go for the derivations okay we just need to understand why the radius of gyration is changing when axis of rotation is changing okay because the distribution of mass around the axis of rotation matters in case uh, in the 
mass moment of inertia calculations okay so for now you note down this i is equal to mk square you have to join back immediately less than 1 minute remaining okay then let us go to the next point linear versus angular motion okay so how the parameters change see or uh, here serial number okay physical quantity okay then in linear motion what is the corresponding thing okay with respect to this and in angular motion what is that corresponding quantity okay so you join back then uh, you see this table